I've built a website infrastructure in Web3, more on that later, where you can buy, sell, trade, create NFTs. And forget the word NFT, just think of digital membership. Exclusive membership, exclusive access. That's what an NFT is. So don't worry about the, the, the fancy words. And what you can do with these NFTs is based off the company or content creator you purchase it from. So if you were to say purchase a MAFA NFT, Shane has been trying to monetize Facebook and what he's built uh, over the past 10 years to nearly 20,000 members, but he can't. Facebook doesn't allow him to monetize. Shane and, and most people are not someone to just start a GoFundMe. Uh, and if people do contribute to the GoFundMe, you don't know how much people contribute or how much they're contributing. So if MAFA was to create an NFT of say 200 exclusive membership tokens, Shane can now earn money from these tokens as a one-off payment. And with these tokens, he can now take the money and offer exclusive events for NFT holders. That may be frag shows, it may be exclusive competitions only for the 200 NFT holders. Um, it could be merchandise, it could be anything. It could be a lifetime pass to restock. It could be a lifetime pass to restock, exactly. And because there's only 100 of them, or 200, or 300, it, it's, it's a concept called tokenomics. You base it off the amount of followers uh, you have and subscribers you have. If there is a finite amount, which there is, and Shane does a great job in building up MAFA, as, he's as he has done over the past 10 years, then people would be lining up to purchase an NFT. And if someone is exiting the hobby or wants to move to a different community or a different NFT, they may sell that token to someone else. And my website has created a way for content creators to create, advertise, sell and trade their NFTs. And uh, influencers, brands, stores uh, can also mint, create, sell, trade NFTs. Um, any questions so far? Still all good? So let's go to the marketplace page. So think of it like an eBay for digital memberships. So as we scroll down, you can see different content creators, stores you may know, brands you may know, influencers you may know, uh, fashion items you may know. For instance, this particular t-shirt, we are gonna make it an NFT. We're going to sell a hundred of them. Once you purchase, once a hundred t-shirts are sold, that's it. No more of this design ever. And it also comes with the NFT and the object as well. So another misconception is that NFTs are only digital. And it is definitely not. It's real world utility. Um, so for instance, Reefstock, Jake and the team may sell 50 reef stock NFTs. And with that particular NFT, you get access to uh, maybe early access at 9 a.m. instead of 10 a.m. Maybe you get an hour later access. Maybe he'll put on private drinks or a dinner that evening in the hotel room for exclusive reef stock members. Maybe it could be free tickets for Denver and Sydney for two years. So it's all about real world utility. Even the art sold on aquaculture.life comes with the real world art piece. So nothing is digital only, it's all real world. Um, any questions yet? Still got everybody? Yeah, okay, excellent. There is six categories on the website. There is art and that is, um, could be small pieces, and we've also got huge pieces, like six foot by six foot, massive pieces that actually get sent to your house with the NFT as well. Uh, if you purchase an art NFT, you will also get access to that particular artist and they may do custom work for you. They may do uh, certain releases just for their NFT holders. 
Um, there is also brands. So for instance, we've got here like Delua or Ecotech or Red Sea. If you own a Delua NFT, you may get lifetime warranty for every Delua product forever. You may get early access to new products Delua release as an example of branded NFTs. Um, collectibles, uh, what I mentioned before, they're one of ones. So that is art pieces at least six foot wide, um, six foot tall, and it gets sent to your house as a one of one image NFT and a real world utility. Um, fashion items mentioned already, t-shirts, shoes, shorts, they can be branded. Um, and then you know when you go to a reef show and you're wearing a particular shirt and there was only 20 made, people know that you exclusively own that particular item and you're not faking it. Influencers is, I think, gonna be the, one of the biggest tokens for sale. So just walking the floor here and in this room, there is already so many people here that can benefit from an influencer token. Um, it's very hard for influencers to monetize what they do. Um, gallery, do a, uh, gallery Cottage do a great job and it drives people to their store. But the YouTube side of things, all the hard work it takes, unless people go to their store, they're not really monetizing. Guys like David, Lauren, among others, yes, they get a free few products here and there, but the amount of hours and work they put into the content that they provide is still not, work, it's, it's still not a, a real monetization of the effort they're putting in. So influencers may release uh, a certain amount of NFTs and give their fanatical fan base exclusive access to content. It may be one-on-one uh, -on -one live streams. It could be in, in galleries, uh, Gallery Quadrico as an example, you might get once a year, Cam will go to your house totally for free and service, give you tips, whatever it may be. And it's like, it could be a celebrity thing. It could be a, uh, just a service thing. Um, but that's what an influencer token can do. And for, for bigger names, it's, it's huge. So Jake can do reef therapy and do an extra hour of content only for NFT holders. Um, Cam can do an hour long podcast only for NFT holders. Uh, still, you know, you want your stuff on YouTube and you want to drive people to your other social media platforms. But in every sector of this hobby and every sector in the world, really, you've got your consumers and then you've got your fan base and then you've got your super fans. And they're the ones that would purchase these NFTs. And then lastly are stores. That can be big LFS, small stores. It could be at-home fraggers as well. Everyone's open to doing this. And I think just between the influencers and the stores, I think the smaller stores and the smaller influencers, they can build up a community a lot faster and a lot more fanatical than already established names if they don't jump on first. So this is gonna be a very slow process over the next few years as people get comfortable with the concept of everything. Um, but I think if people jump on early enough and, and go through the learning curve early enough, all the bigger names and the bigger influencers that aren't selling NFTs and building community engagement from the start, they will start to fall behind as these smaller people may, um, they're a bit more nimble, a bit more risk taking, we'll, we'll jump on. So seeing as there's no, no questions, I'll keep going. This is well, it's good. Um, oh, yes, Jake. in the real world today. So the question is, what are some examples of real world utility of NFTs? Uh, so Dolce & Gabbana did one recently where they sold an Adidas Nike, lots of fashion brands are doing NFTs where they sell one particular item. In Dolce & Gabbana's case, obviously it's six, seven figure items. You get the NFT, you get the one-off item and you get uh, I believe it was two free tools of their facility, which is generally um, very private every year. Um, another uh, example would be, there was a big show in the US called VCon, and they had about 8,000 people there over three days, and only NFT holders could enter the show. 
and you buy the NFT and you get three years of access to this show and you know that everyone in that show has the same NFT as you do or they're part of the same community as you. Um, there's restaurants that have opened in Paris, Tokyo, London, New York, the, the major foodie places of the world where you can, you ha if you own an NFT, you own a seat at this restaurant and you can't get into the restaurant unless you own this NFT. So people go to the restaurant, they eat there, and then they don't want to go back, they can sell the NFT to someone else that wants to take the spot in the restaurant. So there's all these weird and wonderful concepts around NFTs and it's all up to the content creator and how much they want to think outside the box and collaborate with other people. So in the reefing hobby, um, if we were to use say Delua as an example, and then again, Gallery Aquatica, we may say, if you hold a Delua NFT and you hold a Gallery Aquatica NFT, then you will get 20% off all Delua products this weekend, uh, as an example. You can do the same with coral collectors. You might have a Monsoon Aquatics NFT sold at Gallery Aquatica or another aquarium. And um, the guys from Monsoon will be there and you can only go to this event if you hold both those tokens. So it's just a way of collaborating, thinking outside of the box um, and uh, benefiting the more fanatical user base of your communities. So yes, it, any questions? Yes. Uh, they would have to, you would have to make sure that, so if it's a t-shirt or a piece of art, then yes, you would have to make sure that the item's sent first. Uh, you'd need some sort of receipt from the post office or something like that, plus the NFT. That is a little bit trickier. Usually smaller fashion items like t-shirts won't really happen uh, for, for uh, posting, postal uh, things like that. But I think bigger art pieces, it may be done in person. But definitely store NFTs where there's no real world uh, object that you hold, that is where the benefit can come in for that. With the smaller actual tangible items, they're not gonna be worth thousands of dollars. It's still a t-shirt at $100 as opposed to $30, but there is only 100 t-shirts. So, but it could be the, so another example that I had on a lot of these Zooms that I've been doing for six months with stores, stores brainstorming concepts. Um, you know, you might sell a shirt and then say you can only go to this particular event if you have that shirt. So even if it's five years later, they may hold an event just for people with that particular item from five years ago. Which leads on to another question. If someone is a fanatical hobbyist and then they have a tank crash and then they want to exit the hobby and they've got all these NFTs in their wallet, they can now sell their NFT on the aquaculture marketplace. The content creator will continue to get commissions every time the NFT is bought and sold. So again, I'll, use, I'll say Lauren as an example. If Lauren sells 100 NFTs and then disappears and brings out no more content, then obviously her 100 members are not gonna like that. The community is not gonna like that. The NFT will go to zero because there's no market dynamics. There's no line up at the door to buy more. Whereas if she does a great job in building up her 100 strong NFT holders, holds events, people are talking about her on Facebook, sells it for say $500, and someone's willing to sell it on the secondary market, aquaculture.life for $800, then both Lauren has made commission and the person that purchased that NFT as an early investor now makes extra money because they only bought it for 500, they're selling it for 800. And it'll be the same with Delua tokens and branded tokens. If someone switches brands or their tank crashes and they want to sell the Delua token on, that still exists. Delua still honors it, but the next person buys it and hopefully for more money than the, what they sold it for, than what they bought it for. So, um, all good still? Okay, so yes, it is through crypto, which means there are wallets involved, but as you can see, you can buy in with credit card and PayPal, but you do need a small amount of crypto 
in your wallet, which is very easy to do, and I'm talking a few dollars. So when people say, are NFTs related to crypto? Yes, they are related to crypto, but it's just a means of uh, activating that uh, uh, transaction. Just like when you buy a carton of milk, you're not, you don't call yourself a, a trader or an investor, you're just buying something. So same with this. Yes, you're using crypto, you're using Ethereum, but that's just a means to an end. You just use it as a transaction. Uh, but you can also purchase in US dollars and PayPal. Um, logging in is totally anonymous. So as you can see here, top right corner is a wallet address. And this particular user is aquaculture user. You can go to the creator section as well and see all the different users. So you can search your favorite store here. So for instance, let's say uh, G Marine. You can search G Marine. It links to their profile page. You can see all the NFTs that G Marine own and all the NFTs they're selling. And you can also get a link to all their socials as well. So this website also allows you to link people to your other social platforms as well, Facebook, Insta, all of that stuff. Um, and that's really basically it. So as, as soon as you get rid of all the crazy words such as NFTs and crypto, it is actually really simple. This is one of the art pieces um, that we've spoken to certain artists with, uh, and these are gonna be the, the massive six by six foot um, images. Um, so what's the time, what have we got? Another 10 minutes. So if we were to say create, so let's log in first. So if we were to log out, this is the website, top right corner, connect wallet. You click connect wallet. You have to download something called MetaMask. It takes two minutes and it sits in your Chrome browser. As soon as you sign in, your wallet appears on the right hand side. You sign that by clicking and now in the top right corner you can see the site has identified you as that particular user. So we don't know who you are, no name, no address, none of those details, it's totally anonymous. And once you're on the site, you can now mint, create NFTs in a few minutes. So you go to create NFT and you go through the whole process here. So let's say for instance, we got a, what's this one? For instance, you would call this NFT. You do a little bit of info, exclusive wrap, Palooza access for two years. You select the collection it's under. In this time, we'd call it OG membership drop. And you select the amount of copies, say 100. You create NFT. It's now interacting with the blockchain. So your wallet will appear on the right hand side. You hit sign. And you have now minted an NFT, one more sign. So this tells you the transaction. There is a cost that does not go to aquaculture. It goes to the Ethereum blockchain to co write that code in the blockchain forever. And once you hit sign, it will create the NFT, mint the NFT, and then you can sell the NFT on the marketplace. And if you are a user, uh, like a, a consumer, it's the same process to sell your NFT. The internet's a little bit slow, but it'll go through. There you go. So now, has minted an NFT, but it's not for sale yet. So now they'll click their logo. They will click sell. You can have fixed price, auction. You can have make an offer as well. Uh, so say if they want to sell it for uh, 0.5 Ethereum, which is about a thousand Australian dollars at the moment, sorry. No, a bit more than that, actually, at the moment. Uh, and what's the time now? One, two, three. Change the time. You select how many you like as well. So what you can do is you can sell them all at once or you can maybe keep 10 in your treasury and hold raffles and events and give away free NFTs. Uh, you don't have to sell them all at once if you don't want to. Complete listing. What am I missing? Oops. 24, complete listing. 
Again, the wallet will pop up. You can sign. And now your NFT is for sale on the aquaculture marketplace, totally for free. Um, it's free to upload, it's free to join, it's free to create content, it's free to sell NFTs. Um, it's just, it's like exactly like using eBay, but for digital items that are fully transferable. You could also send NFTs from one wallet to another wallet without any transactions if you want to gift NFTs. So um, you could do raffles or events. You could do a reef stock raffle for an NFT where you could actually sell five years worth of reef stock access for uh, whatever people want to pay in the raffle and then Jake can send you that NFT personally. And that's it, yes. At the moment, very cheap, a couple of dollars. About a year ago, when the whole phase of NFTs was going crazy, depending on the traffic of the blockchain at that time, it can go as high as $100, $80 on a bad day. I've seen it at thousands of dollars, but that's when you know, a particular really famous brand is, is launching 10,000 at once. But at the moment, with the price where it is, it's quite cheap, it's like $2.50, $3. Um, and to get technical, but not to lose you, Ethereum are changing the way they verify your NFT. They're changing it to a much faster and cheaper way of verifying the NFT in the back end. And this website will do that for you without you having to do anything. You don't need to know anything of the back end at all. You just use this like you use your normal uh, device. And I forgot to mention what Web3 is. Web3 is where uh, you take your digital assets from community to community or from brand to brand. So your assets live in your wallet and they're actually real assets. So things like culture, MAFA, reef stock, it's actually now a profitable asset if you purchase and follow the right community or brand. Um, so even hobbyists can benefit um, monetarily wise if they choose the right brand or if they choose the right up and comer. That's why the most enthusiastic, the most motivated will do well at this. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, if you're motivated and are looking to put in the work for your community and build everything up, then you will absolutely kill it with NFTs, especially if you're early. So Delua will be doing one very soon. Don't know how much, don't know how many, probably a hundred. Um, we have to price it, you know, maybe 500 to a thousand dollars, but they last forever. And then we can give lifetime warranty forever for any product. Uh, we can do free refurbs, free uh, testing of new equipment, all, all that stuff. So that's how brands could use it. Um, so no, it wasn't too confusing. Everyone understood? Well, wow. oh, yep, yes. Yes, we do, we do. So because anyone can create an NFT in seconds, there is gonna be a lot of spam out there. We've got blue tick verification that we do ourselves manually. Um, so, and we contact, we can contact all the big brands quite quickly and say, is that the real brand or not? But also we definitely recommend if you do use the platform to advertise your specific aquaculture links because every creator has their own link, their own socials on our page. Make sure your Facebook, YouTube, Insta links to your particular profile page. And then you can see the official NFTs that they hold. So don't click any fake links. Don't open any fake emails. Same principles apply from normal internet world to this Web3 world. Follow the correct links. Yeah. Was there a all good question there? Yes. You mentioned the ongoing distribution. Yes. So the, every time the contract is bought and sold, the amount that it's bought or sold for goes to the content creator. So if we'll keep round numbers, I sell one for $100, you buy it for $100, I do a good job, build my community up, it's now $200, you, as the owner, sell it for $200. So 
so you've made $100 profit, 7.5% will go to the original content creator and the rest will go to you. So that's why it's in both parties' interest to both build up the brand, but also build up your own brand. So you would want uh, Delua to do a good job in building up their brand, and I want to continually build up my brand to make sure that my NFT holders are always benefiting and the price is always not going up, but at least stable or there's a lineup to, to enter the, the, the market. Aquaculture does take a commission. We take 2.5% off that sale as well. But there's no initial, there's no sign-up fees, there's no subscriptions or anything like that at all. So it is exactly the same as pretty much using eBay or PayPal. You factor that into the price before you make the purchase. Yeah. And there's no limit to NFTs you can create uh, at all. You do want to keep it quite exclusive though. If you are a store and you get maybe a thousand customers a week or, or a thousand IP addresses to your website, you don't want to release a thousand NFTs. You might not even want to release a hundred NFTs. You want to keep it quite scarce um, so that there's some value to holding that NFT. At the moment, in this day and age, everything is diluted. Brands are diluted, products are diluted, fashion, everything's diluted. Just give free stuff, free stuff everywhere. NFTs is a way to make um, access and um, brands exclusive. So, yeah. All good? Uh, any other questions? I think, I think that's it. You're going to throw things at people? <laughs> so, the site's not live yet, by the way. Um, and as you know, I've been releasing very small, cryptic, YouTube videos, they are gonna get more in depth. I just didn't wanna scare anybody. If I recorded, so there's about an hour worth of footage. If I release an hour worth of footage, no one will watch it. So we're gonna release it very slowly. And while we're releasing it slowly, it's such a pretty crazy technology that we need to test and test and test to make sure it's very secure, which is another point. This has no link to your, web, uh, to your bank details, credit card details, PayPal details, or anything at all. Not our site, not your wallet. The only thing people can steal if you give them your code or if you open a, a spam link is or are your assets within your wallet. So don't think it's not safe or you're gonna get hacked or you hear all those scary stories. No, it's up to you to not open any silly emails or links. So, all good? <laughs>